You know, you gotta love the universe. The universe is amazing. Being in the fire of anger. Wow, that's pretty heavy. But you know what? It is perfect for the times that we're in. Because I don't know about you, but I've had some angry feelings come up recently. And usually I'm really good about addressing them and being able to move them out, transforming them into something else. But I noticed yesterday morning that there was a lot of distress and tension that it was holding in the body. And I realized that it was left over our residue of anger. You know, just I hadn't cleared it all out just yet. And I don't know about you all, but, you know, anger is a natural process that we go through. And we tend to be told that anger is bad, and actually the complete opposite is the truth. Anger is a good way for us to recognize those thoughts, those feelings, and the attachments we have to previous situations, people, trauma that have, has occurred in our life. And personally, I don't know anybody who hasn't had some type of trauma in their life. And that anger allows us to look at the attachments to it, right? And so when we, when we begin to look at it, then we can take control and responsibility for our thoughts and for those feelings and kind of dissolve that anger a little bit or maybe all the way. Because we have to really look at our judgments. What are our perceptions about the situation, about this person, about whatever it is? that created the anger in you at the moment. Because once we become aware of it, we can control our response to the anger. And that's where anger gets its bad name, right? Is in our response. It's not in the anger itself. Anger is just an emotion that we go through. And if we acknowledge it and move through it without trying to stuff it down, oh, I'm not angry, I'm, you know, that doesn't bother me. Well, the truth is it probably did. And when we respond, how did we respond? Did we lash out? Did we forget our teachings and look outside of us to blame, shame, or hurt? Or do we go inside and see where we have those guilty feelings, those shameful, blameful feelings, you made me feel, or I felt, or you should have done this, right? Is that how we, we respond normally? When we begin to look at it with awareness, we can create thoughts that are empathetic, that are right thinking. It's about how we judge ourselves. It's about our own perceptions and thoughts around the situation or person. It's not about them at all. And when we allow that anger to cause us to disconnect or leads us to violent behaviors, that's 
where most of us see anger as that bad emotion, that bad thing that we do, that bad behavior. In truth, you are the only one who can make yourself angry. Nobody else can do that. You're not a victim. You're only a victim if you allow your mind to tell you you're a victim. You're only a victim if you allow yourself to be that. And, and I'm not saying that there's not horrific things that happen to people because they do, it does. So don't, that's not what I'm saying. But being honest about what happened, being aware of what happened. Because we make ourselves sick when we're angry if we don't handle the anger in a modified behavioral way. And to be honest, most of us don't have the skills ourselves to work through our anger. Um, so seeking professional help in one way or another, whether it's a practitioner, whether it's a therapist, whatever it is that you're called to, to work through and work with, I encourage you to do that. You know, if there's a nonviolent communication group that you can work through and, and begin to see your own triggers and then have a talk with somebody about maybe some good tools that I can use, you know, or, you know, I, I, I'm traumatized by this. I just need somebody to listen to me, right? So find that whatever, whoever it is and whatever techniques you can use to expel those feelings. Because we are triggered by that emotion when we're afraid, when we're hurt, when we're scared. And our self-talk is the actual root cause of it all. Because we tell ourselves thing, or we tell ourselves all this stuff that's not true about who, about us, right? Anybody do that? Am I the only one that does that? Okay. And yes, I do do it, and I know better, but when I'm angry, I'm angry, and I have to have an outlet for it. And if I don't catch myself and be aware that what's going on in my thoughts and my mind, then I'm in that same vicious cycle as everybody else. Hopefully I've done enough work that I catch it sooner so I don't just disrupt somebody else's life. Right now, our world is filled with anger, hatred. Our city is fueled by it. And it's fueled by our own thoughts of the anger in the city and across America because a tragic incident occurred in our city along with several other cities against our black brothers and sisters. And people are angry, they're frustrated, they're sad because it's a continuing cycle just like a continuing cycle of abuse. It's no different. It's what it is. It's a reality. People are demanding accountability. And I don't know about you, but I hold people accountable. I expect people to hold me accountable. And I think that's an expectation all of us need to look at. It doesn't matter which side of the fence you're on, because really there's, there's no one or the other. There's only one, because we're all one mind, one heart, one people. 
And so we're really all in the middle of it all. And that consciousness, that collective consciousness of our own individual fears and anger and perceptions and judgments rise up to join with everybody else's fears and anger and sadness and frustrations. And it creates the tension that I felt yesterday in my work, in my prayer time. So we have a group of peaceful protesters demanding change in our city and across America. And at the same time, we have to acknowledge that we have angry souls out there who are striking out in violence and unable to control their thoughts, their actions, because they have never experienced a healthy way to do it. They're in their era thinking. They don't have a clue of how to handle the anger. So let's send love to them too, because they need it. Of course, then we have the opposite force of judgment, con condemning the protesters and the negative behavior of the anger souls, and that just creates more conflict and more tension and more anger. You see where I'm going here? It just keeps up until you have this big fire of anger within all the individuals on our planet and collectively that fire is just burning rapidly. And we have our police officers who are made up of both groups, all the groups. And they're all on fire, right? They're not bad people. They're just people caught up in a situation that they have no control over. Most of them. There are some that I'm sure have some accountability, as do our city officials, our state officials, our national officials, leadership everywhere is accountable for some stuff that has happened. But the truth is this is a cycle of destruction. And it affects every soul on this planet. Each of us must take responsibility and accountability for our thoughts, our judgments, the needs, and you all know I don't like that word, so I'm going to change it. But in nonviolent communications, they would say the word needs. I'm going to say request. What is it that I want to be aware and, and to control how we respond to anger? It is our responsibility as individuals to control our response to anger. And we also have to take response for our own actions and choices. Whatever they are, doesn't matter. But we have to be, we take responsibility for them. As does every other being on this planet. We have to look at the emotion attached to that trigger. We work to reveal that root cause because if you can figure out exactly what that root cause is, you can actually dig it out. Y'all know I like to garden, so I'm going to dig it out, right? I'm going to get all the way down. Because that's the way you heal. What is the root cause of this situation? That's how we heal this. And sometimes we need help. We need people to come in from the outside to help us collectively as a community like we do in unity, right? I mean, if we get in conflict, what do we do? We call in the healthy congregations people or we call in some other compassionate group to help us lead healing circles and to begin to look at our own process and to heal from the inside out, right? 
That's the behavior we have to model for ourselves and for the world. And this is a heavy topic, and it's not easy. Moving through our anger, first we have to take responsibility for our own feelings and thoughts. We have to look at that stimuli, what caused it. And remember, I am responsible for my thoughts and feelings. I am responsible for my thoughts and feelings. We have to be open to a new way, new strategies, new results. We have to live in the flow of ideas and to do something differently. Our purpose is to connect with each other, to build common ground, to resolve our differences. We have to disagree and agree in love. Not only when we're in this community, because that is an agreement that we all have as members of this community, but we have to take that outside these doors. And when we're in conversation with someone who does not agree with us, we love them anyways. And we see them as the expression of God that they are. We pay attention to our judgments and jury. Now I've got a judge and jury in my head. It goes on all the time. Wish I could dig it out sometimes. <laughs> Listen to the energy within, the self-talk. What's it saying? How can you change it if you don't like it? Take steps to change it if you don't like it. And if you like it, let it bloom and grow. Connect with your request, your needs and feelings, and be honest about what they are. Build on your own self-empathy. Be aware of your own feelings and requests. Be vulnerable. This one's hard because we don't like to be vulnerable, but you got to put yourself out there and you got to do it without shame, blame, or guilt. And that's hard to do. And that's why sometimes you need somebody else in your corner cheering you on. Because when two or more together, anything's possible. You have to look at those feelings beneath the anger, which are mixed in with the anger. So sometimes they're hidden. That frustration, that fear, that disappointment, or just sadness. And I say just sadness or sadness. Sadness can be a deadly thought process. And then after we look at those six steps and we take them, we got to walk our talk. We got to do the work that we are here to do. Be the spirit that you came here to be. Find someone to practice with. Be authentic, be empathetic, and be compassionate. And join me and others holding each other in the high watch. I was here last night, as were many others, Kim Summers, Leah Zellers, Jackie Salzman, Krista Matheny, and some of their friends holding the high watch in prayer, being here in the community, sending love and light out into the world. And we can do that from our homes, but once again, when we're collectively together, there's a shift, and you can feel that shift. And that's the purpose. 
I invite you to join us every evening in prayer and pray throughout the night until dawn and the new light and the new day. I love you. I bless you. I believe in us, standing in truth, seeing justice for each and every one of us, sharing the love and light of the world. And so it is. Amen.